Hi folks and welcome to Cedar Hill Christmas Tree Farm. So this is the entrance to our farm. And this is our main Christmas tree shop. Over here, we have our big kids playground, which includes our straw bale fort, which is made up of about 80 big straw bales. We also have a small as well as a really, really big sliding hill that goes all the way down the hill here. And over in the distance there is our Hallmark famous covered bridge that's been featured in numerous Hallmark movies. So moving back over to here, we have our Christmas shop, which is where we have our restaurant and our gift shop and lots of nice Christmas things to buy. And then in this area here, this is where we shake and we bale the Christmas trees after people have bought them. So up here, these are all Christmas trees that we've cut from our farm that people can come and buy. They're all different sizes. We have great big ones like these, and we have regular sized trees like these ones here. And then we have more trees. And then over here, We've got lots of little baby trees for the people who just want a small tree or it's tree outside their house as well. And now I'll show you how we shake and we bale the trees. So this is Neil. I'm doing a live tour for classrooms. So this is Neil and he is going to shake one of the Christmas trees. So what this does is it gets all the needles and all the, all the dead needles or grass clippings and extra snow off the tree. So when you take it in your house, it's nice and clean. And then he's gonna put it through the baler. So it gets all wrapped up, nice and small. Now these trees that are all wrapped up will be ready to go on the top of people's heart home. This here is the tractor and wagon we use to take people out to the field to cut their trees. And over here, you can see a field of our Christmas trees. So here's our oak. And then behind, 
This is a field of trees. There's some little baby trees here at the front. And at the back, there's lots of nice big trees ready to be cut down for Christmas. Now we'll go over to this building here. In this building here, it's our new building. We just built it this summer. This is where we decorate all of our wreaths. We build and we decorate all of the wreaths and things that we make here for sale. So decorating in our building. And then I'll show you what the wreaths look like when they're ready for sale. So these are the kinds of wreaths that we make here that we sell at the farm. Now we'll go inside and you can see inside our Christmas shop. So inside here, this is our Christmas shop with lots of things to sell and lots of Christmas gifts for people to buy. This is our kitchen where Katie makes all sorts of yummy, amazing food like cupcakes and brownies and Rice Krispie squares and cookies. And there's lots of food things to eat. There's lots of maple products from Fulton Sugarbush just up the road. And there's fudge and there's treats. There's lots of things. And over here, We have our nice fireplace where people can stand and warm up after being outside. There we go. And are there any questions? <laughs> so someone's asking how many trees we have on our farm on the farm now we have about probably between 50 and 60 thousand trees growing on the farm they'll all be cut and ready for harvest uh, in the next eight to ten years Uh, every year, uh, we sell a couple of thousand trees off the farm every year. Um, it varies uh, from year to year, uh, but we do sell, you know, a couple of thousand trees every year off of the farm. So I'll go outside again and I'll show you uh, the way that we care for our trees. So every spring in May, we plant trees on the farm and it takes about eight to 10 years to grow the tree to be ready to harvest. So it grows about one foot every year. So over here, we have a really great sign that shows how we care for our tree. In the spring, we plant the trees, we have to fertilize them. And one thing that a lot of people don't know that we do on a Christmas tree farm every year 
is we actually have to pull all the pine cones off all the trees every single year. And sometimes one tree can have over 700 pine cones on it and we have to pull all of them off. If it's a dry year and we don't get enough rain, we also have to irrigate and water the trees so they have enough water to grow. And then twice in the summer, we have to prune them. That means taking off a little bit of the ends of the trees so they stay in a nice uh, Christmas tree shape and they get nice and full. After they've been cut at Christmas time, uh, we wait until the next year and then we have to grind the stumps because there's still stumps on the ground when we're done. And then we have to grind the stumps and get the field all ready for the next year. So we'll go back inside again. So we grow five different varieties of Christmas trees here on the farm. We have the most popular variety that we sell is the Fraser fir tree. It's the slowest growing tree at the farm. Uh, it's also the hardest to grow. Um, we then also grow balsam fir trees, white spruce trees, blue spruce trees, and scotch pine trees. The most popular tree that we sell is the Fraser fir tree. Uh, the reason is it has the best needle retention. So that means after you've cut the tree, the needles stay on for a really long time. So this here is a picture of a wreath that we built from a Fraser fir tree four years ago and the needles still haven't fallen off. The needles have gone brown and dried out but the needles have not fallen off. So that's why people like the Fraser fir tree because they know the tree will last for a really, really long time. The tallest Christmas tree that we have on the farm here is probably around 18 feet tall. Um, the most common size of tree that we sell is about uh, seven to eight feet tall. An average tree probably weighs, I'm going to say 30 to 40 pounds. Uh, the boys out in the yard who work for us lift a lot of trees every day. Some of them can get to be over 100 to 150 pounds for some of the really big trees that we sell. My job at the farm. Um, my job at the farm is I look after the gift shop and I hire everyone and I run the cash register on busy days. Uh, my husband looks after the farming part of the farm, the growing the trees and things like that. Uh, so insect and disease control, that is done in a variety of different ways. This spring, we did have an issue with gypsy moth caterpillars at the farm, and we used an organic insecticide called BTK, which helped to control them. Um, other than, as far as diseases too, a lot of that is based on the nutrition uh, of the soil in the ground. So we do a lot of soil sampling and a lot of tissue analysis on the trees to make sure the trees stay healthy and that we're uh, keeping all those issues under control. So Cedar Hill Christmas Tree Farm actually began as a berry farm back in the 1970s, in the late 70s. The previous owners to the farm uh, began planting Christmas trees in the 1990s and they started selling Christmas trees in 1997. In 2011, all the berry plants were taken off of the farm and it was just a Christmas tree farm. And then my husband and I took the farm over from the previous owners in 2016. So this is the sixth season that we've been running the farm. Oh, that's a great question. How many people visit our farm? Um, I don't have a really good count on that. Um, 
but it's thousands and thousands and thousands of people visit the farm every year. Uh, we're open in the fall season as well uh, for weekends. So in between the fall and the Christmas season, there are thousands of people who come here. My favorite type of tree. My favorite type of tree, um, I do like the Fraser fir because of all the reasons it's a great tree, but I really love looking at the blue spruce trees. Um, but the only thing I don't like about the blue spruce trees is the needles are really, really prickly and sharp. So, the seed, the trees don't reseed themselves. Uh, we actually buy little tiny baby trees that are between two and three years old. And we plant those every year. So we don't plant seeds in the ground. We plant baby trees in the ground. Um, and last year we planted 11,000 little trees in the ground. So once you've cut your Christmas tree, uh, the most important thing to do is to, when you put it up, is to make sure it always has water. If a Christmas tree runs out of water, even one time, it will, um, the bottom of the stump, the resin will seal off the bottom of the stump and it may then dry out and lose its needles. So the most important thing you can do is put it in a good stand that's going to hold it up and to, keep watering it every single day, maybe even twice a day, so it's always nice and moist. Well, we don't do anything with the pine cones that we pick off the trees. Um, the pine cones that we pick off the fir trees are really, really sticky, and we can't really use those ones, but we do pick thousands of red pine cones and Norway spruce cones and white spruce cones. And we use those varieties of cones in our wreaths every year. So we don't use the fir tree cones, but we do use thousands of cones uh, in other ways on the farm. So our trees enter what's called dormancy in the winter, which means that um, they kind of go into like a state of rest over the winter. And a Christmas tree really only grows every year from about mid-April to mid-July. So we always wait until mid-July to start pruning the trees because at that point we know the tree is done growing for the year and we can prune it and shape it nicely and it doesn't hurt it while it's growing. So the tree with the sharpest needles is definitely the blue spruce. I can't even pick one up with bare hands because they're so sharp. Um, they look really, really pretty, but they're not very much fun to touch. Uh, we didn't change the farm from a berry farm to a Christmas tree farm. That was done by the people who own the farm before us. Um, I think they just enjoyed the fact that the Christmas trees are a little less uh, demanding. Uh, being a berry farmer is a lot of work in the summer and a lot of work to manage. So they've transitioned to, to a Christmas tree farm and we've taken it over just like that. We buy our baby trees from two different places. Uh, one is Downey Tree Farms in Quebec, and the other is Somerville Nurseries in Everett, Ontario. Uh, the other great thing about a Christmas tree farm is the Christmas trees, when they're growing, they capture lots and lots of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and turn that, uh, that carbon dioxide back into oxygen, which is really important, and it helps to combat climate change. So... By growing all these trees on our farm and always planting new trees, we're helping with climate change by uh, purifying the air. And the other nice thing about a Christmas tree is once you're done with it, you can leave it out in your backyard and let the birds and the squirrels use it for a winter home. And then it will decompose and compost down back into soil again. 
and it won't sit in a in a dump or in a landfill for the rest of it for the rest of our lives. I don't know the answer to this question of why trees have become a holiday tradition. Um, I guess I need to do some research on that, but um, that is a great question. <laughs> So the smallest tree that we have, all the trees that we have will grow really, really big if you let them keep growing and you don't cut them down. The small, the slowest growing tree that we have is the Fraser fir and takes the longest to grow. But we have some trees in the farm that are almost 20 feet tall because they're really old. So average tree this year on our farm is about a seven to eight foot Fraser fir and they cost $79 and we usually sell you know 2,000 trees off the farm in a year. Uh, yes we in a dry year we do have to water our trees. We have an irrigation system uh, that goes out to all the fields that have little trees in them. So any of our new trees that are only here, you know, one, two, three years, they have little black hoses that run to every single tree uh, called a drip line. And that's used to water the trees and to irrigate them to keep them moist uh, during the, the summer when it's really dry out. <clears throat> So we have sent trees to Parliament Hill. Our trees have been in the home of, uh, you know, Prime Minister Trudeau, as well as other members of Parliament and at Rideau Hall. Uh, we have also had many, many of our trees featured in Hallmark movies, as well as having had four Hallmark movies filmed here at the farm. So that's the most famous trees we've had. So if we have leftover trees at the end of our season that have already been cut, we will compost them in our compost piles. And then we use that compost to fertilize in the fields in the following spring. Uh, any trees that are, have not been cut, they will just continue to grow until the next year and get taller. So to plant our trees, we have a special planter. Uh, it's go, it gets pulled behind our little tractor and two people sit on the planter and feed the trees into what's called a shoe. And a, a coulter disc cuts a trench in the ground and the shoe uh, rotates and, and drops the trees into the, uh, into the trench that's made. And then we have people following us on the planter and they close in the trench and they pack the ground around every single tree to make sure that it's in the ground, its roots are fully covered, um, and it's ready to start growing. I think the most important and rewarding part about having a tree farm is that when people come to our farm at Christmas time, they're here and they make family memories and family traditions and it's really special and it's really fun um, to have something that we grew in so many homes at Christmas time. Uh, Christmas is a really, really important part of a lot of people's families. And it's, we really enjoy that part of talking to our customers, getting to know them and to be a part of their special Christmas traditions. Wow, I don't know how many needles a tree has, but a lot. Um, there's a lot of different textures of needles. We can tell all the trees apart by the way that their needles are, whether they're soft, what color they are, and what shape they are. But I would think a tree would have thousands and thousands and thousands of needles. Uh, the only animals that we have on our farm is we have two dogs named Missy and Ernie. We have 10 laying chickens who, uh, 
who lay eggs that we have for our family as well as we sell here. And we have bunnies as well. So when visitors come to the farm, they can play with our bunnies. Uh, right now we have two bunnies that, uh, that people can visit with named Snowball and Buster. Um, if we have trees that aren't growing properly or they're just not doing well, um, you know, if we don't think that they are going to get to become big, nice Christmas trees, we will cut them out of the field and compost them. And then that leaves more space and room and nutrients for the trees near it to grow bigger. I can flip the camera for sure. And there we go. Are there any other questions? Oh, Santa visits our farm all the time. Uh, he's been here three days already, and he's also coming here this weekend on both Saturday and Sunday. And he even has a special sleigh here. And uh, the children are always welcome to visit with Santa and bring their letter to him so that he remembers everything they want. He takes the letters back up to the North Pole with him uh, and then he fills their list with that. Uh, we decorate lots of trees. Um, we have the, oh, a tree in our own house plus we also decorate trees all over the farm not just our Christmas trees but some of our maple trees in the laneway um, so we do a lot of Christmas decorating here. We decorate our fences, our buildings, and lots and lots of trees. Uh, yeah, I can take you outside and we can see Santa's sleigh. I believe it's on the back porch right now. Um, we like to keep it dry when he's not here so that it's ready for when he comes again this weekend. So his sleigh is just up here and I will show it to you. There we go. So there is Santa's sleigh. Our farm is located in between Almont and Packenham which is just about half an hour from Ottawa. So after Christmas, we often recommend that people uh, keep their tree and outside, maybe in the backyard, um, Birds and squirrels and other wildlife love using Christmas trees to live on uh, during the winter. Um, it's always great to put some feeders out there for them. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to watch the birds too and to get to know them and to learn how to identify the birds. And then once uh, you know, you're ready to use your yard for spring and for summer, you can take your tree uh, to any um, oftentimes municipalities will pick them up as well to dispose of them, um, but it's great to compost them. And, uh, and the other thing that sometimes is people will take them to goat farms because goats love eating Christmas trees. Thanks very much guys. And I hope you had fun at Cedar Hill Christmas tree farm.